Hello there, welcome to this video. Um, this is a really different one that I'm doing. Um, and I don't know how it's going to end or anything, but I'll bring you up to speed. The long and short of it is that these two drives have been obliterated. So if I turn them over, you can see here a nice big hole where the magic smoke has come out. And also on this one here, a nice big hole. And they don't work as you probably could imagine. Now what happened was these very dated IDE drives were installed in a computer system in an office PC at a business. Um, the system was something like an AMD uh, XP 1400 plus or something, like really 1.4 gigahertz, something like that. And it had about 400 megabytes of RAM. Um, so quite dated, you're talking about a 15 year old system. And I've been saying for a while, you know, this system needs to be updated and whatever. Well, some work was being done on it by a person. And they'd finished all of their work off, saved it to the computer in a, a spreadsheet, an Excel or Word document or whatever it was. And then they were going to copy it to a USB stick as a backup. Now, they plugged in the USB stick and they went to copy it, uh, looked over to answer somebody who spoke to them, looked back, the screen on the computer had gone white, and the magic smoke was coming out the back of the computer from the power supply. So that's never a good thing when your power supply is letting out the magic smoke. So, um, computer unplugged, turned it off, took the drives out, took these, like, hopefully, you know, the drives are going to be okay, fingers crossed. It's just took out the power supply or whatever else has gone bad. Turns out the power supply failed so dramatically that it killed both of these hard drives itself, the motherboard, sound card, video card, processor, the lot, all of it went in one go. It took everything out. These drives have got data on that need to be recovered because there was no backups of some of it. Oh, also, when it's took out these drives and everything else, it also took out the USB stick that had the backups on. So the backups have also been erased of the data. So, hopefully, the internals of these drives are okay and just the PCBs are damaged. Now, I have no idea if that is the case or not. I've never had this issue and had to recover the drive. But I'm going to try it in this video. So, anyway, that's uh, the introduction over. So, what I'm going to do is root through my stash of drives. I never throw a hard drive away. I always save them, even when they're bad, bad sectors, whatever. Because you never know when you may need PCBs or parts for another drive with critical data on. Now, this is a Maxter 80 gigabytes, And there's a Hitachi Deskstar 80 gigabytes both drives so I'm now I've already gone through my stash of drives which I'll show you now okay so this once white now very discoloured box contains my collection of hard drives not all of the drives in here are bad some do work okay and they're marked um, and some of them are completely dead, or they've got bad sectors, or whatever. I keep them purely for pieces, and I've been through here already. There's lots of drives in here, trust me. I mean, look, I can stand this drive up at the side, and there's still plenty more room. There's lots and lots of drives in there. I've not even counted them, and it's very heavy. I found this drive, which is a, a Max to Diamond Max Plus 80 gig. That looks very, very similar to this one here. I've marked them with an A so I know which are which. So that one may be good. I have also had a look for this it's actually desk star. And I have found none in here at all. Don't have any of them. Not in IDE anyway. I have some SATA versions, but I'm not even gonna take the chance of trying to put a, a SATA PCB on the drive and all that. I, I seriously doubt it would work. One of these drives 
and we've no idea which one has got the data on that needs saving. Could be one, could be the other. It looks like this is the only one I'm going to have a chance of trying to fix. So hopefully it was this one. But I'm about to find out, I guess. If this even works. So I'm going to go and dig out some components, a uh, board and some memory and stuff. And build a test bench here and we'll see what we can do with these. Okay, so the lighting will be crap over here because I didn't even plan on filming this side. But um, this is kind of what I've got hanging around just all the time. Uh, a selection of hardware from graphics cards to motherboards, coolers, fans, uh, processors, power supplies, you name it. There's all this stuff just kind of chilling. So I'm just going to grab one of these boards, which I think maybe this one would be a good choice. Uh, it's got an IDE connector on it, which is actually quite rare on a lot of these boards. I've got the more modern socket 775s. So we'll go for this board. It's even got memory in it, so that may work. The next thing is a CPU cooler, which I happen to have one hanging around here. That's quite filthy, but we'll go with that. Okay, now power supply. Okay, so buried in this corner under the desk is a stash of power supplies. Um, I'm going to go with maybe this one here because it's at the top of the pile okay so I've actually got no idea if this board or hard drive or CPU or memory or anything works these are just what I've grabbed I know the power supply works so that's a good thing I guess somewhere to start from um, I'm also going to need an IDE cable which I don't think I have I might have to rub one out of an old computer or something but um, I presume the CPU is also supported by this board uh, first thing, yeah, I should really clean this thermal paste off this, but I'm not going to because I'm not actually going to be firing this up into a system. It's literally just to boot a BIOS and check if the thing is working. So I'm going to plot on this heatsink fan. Okay, so I've got the CPU heatsink and fan on. I'm just going to whack the power supply in, the 24 and 4 pin. Okay, I've got the power supply hooked up. For some reason, my phone decided to stop recording and tell me the battery was low instead of just continuing to record like it normally does. No idea. Anyway, um, I'm going to try and boot this system first, just check it's working before I connect anything else to it. So I'll turn it on, get the uh, tweezers that are still to hand from the last video I did, diagnosing the board, and uh, power on. That wasn't bad for a first guess. That fan is really, really loud and knackered. That's like really, really annoying. Um, but yeah, it seems to have been rebooted. Yeah. So I'd say the memory needs changing on this board, perhaps it's bad RAM. So I'm just going to pull this out and stick it in the box up there. Let's get the memory box down. I have a rather large stockpile of memory and everything else because I don't throw hardware out. I keep it because you never know when you will need it. So what have we got in here? Uh, I think this is all DDR1 stuff, really. Yeah, so that's all DDR RAM. Um, so if anybody wants any DDR, you, you know where I am. Anyway, in this continuation of it, we've got laptop memory, laptop memory. Uh, this looks a bit more promising, DDR2. Um, We've got here a PC 4200U, I don't know if this board supports that. We've got only like 5300, that tends to be supported by pretty much every board. 3200, I don't think we do. Unless this is some. 5300U, yes, here we go. That looks promising. I'm going to whack this in the board. move this box out of the way for a minute. 
may need it still. Power on. Turn on the board. That fan is really irritating. Oh, we've got a post. There we go. It's a Cortu Joey 7200 on this board, it seems. So, there we go, that's good. I can turn off. My next task is to find an IDE cable to connect the drive to the board. Okay, so, um, now I've found the IDE cable. I'm going to connect that up. And I'm going to plug in the drive that I found. We'll see if this works. Don't know what it's set to, you've got to do settings on ID, haven't you? It's on cable select, so that should do. So there we go. And then we put this one in. So that's now power and data. Let's start the system and have a see what happens. I'm going to disconnect this bloody loud fan. There we go. It sounds okay. Okay, we've got a primary ID hard disk there. I don't know if we can enter the BIOS from this screen. Probably not. Oh, it's trying to load something from the hard drive. I don't know what the hell will be on it. Oh, blue screen, nice. Uh, let's try and get in the BIOS. Spam in the delete key. Yep, there's the BIOS. Standard features. Yep, max the drive. Detected OK. So this drive is good. So let's change the PCB. OK, and unfortunately it looks like the Hitachi is not going to be repaired because I've not got the components to do it. But these two are a different matter. So, I mean, if we look at them, they've got the same models. They've got the same codes down here. They've got the same, well, the same whatever this number is. Presumably the actual long model number. Everything is pretty much a match on them, apart from a few little things. I mean, heck, if we even look at the date, this manufactured 22nd February 2004. 29th of February 2004. So these were only a couple of days between each other. So let's try and get the boards off here. I'm going to start with these already dead drive. I've got some screwdrivers here which I'm hoping will fit because these are security type fittings but I think a flat blade will just about manage to do it yep we're in five screws I've never actually taken one of these apart, so we have no idea what holds them together. Oh, it seems like we may be free now, just off of those screws. Yep, definitely. So there we go. The board's now free, you can see all the contacts here, where it meets up. Try not to get these dirty or dust or anything in them. I'm going to whiz the circuit board off the other drive really quickly. Okay, this is the second PCB now loose. Give it a good wiggle. This one was stuck on with a little more pressure. But there we go. That looks the same. That's good. Let's move this disc out of the way. Let's get the two buds side by side really quickly. Everything checks out and seems to be pretty much the same. Which is what we like to see. So now it's time to screw on the good board, the one without the great big hole in it, onto drive A. Which I'm going to do now. Just gently lower this over. There we go. It meets with these little pins. I'm going to screw this in now. Okay. The uh, PCB is now screwed on. I'm running out of storage on this phone as well, which is quite unfortunate. So I'm going to try and speed things up here. So let's get this hooked up and see if it does anything at all. 
I don't know if the PCB is somehow locked to the internals of the drive, if they have a key or something between the two of them. I guess we're about to find out if this works. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is hook up just the power and see what happens. Hopefully this doesn't also fry itself because that would be very bad considering it's late at night and I'm going to go to bed after shooting this video. I don't want to be sleeping with the crappy electronic smell in my room. But here goes nothing. I don't even know if it's going to power on, spin up or anything. Oh, well that's... I guess that sounds good. It made a noise. And it didn't blow up yet. So, let's plug in the data cable. Turn on. Turn on. And watch the screen. Okay, we've detected an ID master. But will it work? It's hanging for quite a while at this screen. The hard drive is spinning, I can feel. I'm going to restart the system. Primary master hard disk error, F1 to resume. So I didn't restart but it came up with that error. Uh, it's detecting it as a zero megabyte drive. So I think maybe the PCB doesn't, maybe the PCBs are tied to the drive and that is the problem because it's nice and tight on the drive, it's making contact with all the connectors the platter spinning and the head's moving, you can feel that. Uh, I'm going to do a bit of research really quick and then I will conclude. Okay, so I now know why the board isn't working on this drive. Now, what, these drives have got a BIOS chip on them. A drive BIOS, like, that lets the PCB talk to the drive and everything. And that is this little chip here, the little one just at the edge of my finger, with the eight legs on it. That contains unique information that allows the drive to function, lets the PCB talk to the insides of the drive. And to make this work, this would have to be changed around on these boards. Now, I don't have the tools to do that. That requires solder and iron, hot air gun, etc. I, well, I have got the tools, but I don't have access to them right now. And this, the information and data that's on here is about an hour's work to replace and it's not that critical luckily so I'm not going to go through the length of changing that on this particular drive but the final step to do for this to work if I wanted it to work would be to change the BIOS chip this one here with that one now you need a steady hand and to be quite skilled with a solder and iron to do that or go an electronics repair shop to do it for you but as I say the data on this drive isn't that critical and I'm not going to follow that route so yeah that's where I'm really going to leave this video I'm afraid uh, I was hoping I could get something out of it I don't know if the Hitachi drive also uses the BIOS chip I've not looked into that it was just the particular numbers on this PCB I've been looking up and that's the information I found but yeah, I hope you found this video interesting, helpful in one way or another. If you've got any questions, please feel free to leave them down below and ask me and I'll do my best to try and answer them. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like or if you found it helpful. If you would like to if you would like to see more if you'd like to see more computer videos in the future and techie stuff like this, subscribe to my channel. I uh, upload random videos like this whenever the uh, opportunity arises. And I hope to see you again in another video.